In the last unit, we looked at naming alcohol molecules using common nomenclature and IUPAC nomenclature. In this video, we take a look at how to go about naming a group of molecules referred to as phenols. When we talk about phenols, what we're referring to is molecules that have the group shown below in them, where we have an aromatic ring. Remember that that's a ring that has alternating single and double bonds in a six-membered ring. We can abbreviate that by using a hexagon with this circle inside to illustrate that there is resonance going on amongst the pi bonds in that ring, so that they are totally delocalized around the ring. That ring is directly connected to a hydroxy group. So this is what makes this molecule referred to as a phenol. It absolutely has to be an aromatic ring directly bonded to an alcohol group. So just a couple of terms to toss out here as we be get, get started with this. So when we're talking about terminology here, the term for an aromatic ring that has a hydroxy group directly bonded to it, so aromatic ring, hydroxy group directly bonded to it, we would refer to that as a phenol. Now this term phenol, which ends in OL to indicate to you that it's an alcohol, also has this term phen in it. And the term phen is derived from the fact that we can refer to an aromatic ring connected to whatever else as a phenol group, P-H-E-N-Y-L. So if we're referring to an aromatic ring as a functional group, one way that we can refer to it as is a phenol group or an aromatic group as a synonym to that. So phenol is just a phenol, P-H-E-N-Y-L group that has an alcohol directly bonded to it. So that's gonna be our terminology here. And what we're going to do is look at how to go about naming molecules that have additional functional groups in addition to being built on the phenol scaffold. So let's go through the guidelines for naming molecules that have phenol groups in them. First off, when we're naming these molecules, we're going to use phenol as the parent name, as the last part of the name of the molecule. Carbon number one of the ring, by definition, is going to be the carbon atom that has the phenol, that has the alcohol group on it. And if we have a second group on the ring, what we're going to do is number the ring so that we take the shortest distance possible to go from the carbon as the alcohol group to the carbon that has the second substituent. So let's illustrate this for the molecule shown on the right. So first off, straight away, you know that the parent name of this molecule is going to be phenol because of the fact that we have an aromatic ring. And remember that aromatic ring absolutely has to have these alternating single and double bonds. If it doesn't, then it's just a cyclohexane ring as the, as the parent there. So in this case, aromatic ring directly bonded to hydroxy group means that we need to plug in as our parent name here, phenol. Then what we need to do is keep in mind that we are always going to place the hydroxy group at carbon number one of the ring, and then we need to number the ring so that we take the shortest distance to head to the second substituent. So our second substituent over here, the tert-butyl group, so we want to number clockwise going from one to two to three like so, because that's going to put the tert-butyl branch at carbon number three, whereas if we went around the ring the other way, going from one to two to three to four, that would put the phenol branch all the way over at carbon number five. That's a much longer distance to take around the ring to get to there, so we want to take this route. So we would refer to this molecule as three tert butyl phenol, and the tert butyl and phenol terms can run right together there. Keep in mind there are no places in this particular molecule where we need to assign R, S, or E, Z stereochemistry. The stereochemistry of the alkene bonds within a ring are pre-established due to the fact that the ring constrains these bonds leading away from them so that the molecule has to adopt this particular shape. So there's no need to define these pi bonds as E or Z. That's totally, totally not necessary here. Let's do another example problem. In this problem, we're going to apply an additional rule, keeping in mind that we have three or more substituents on the ring in this case. We have our hydroxy group, we have our ethyl group, and we have our methyl group. So there's three or more substituents. What we're going to do is start at the phenyl carbon, right there. Phenol will be the parent name here. So it's assumed that that carbon bearing that hydroxy group is at carbon number one. And then to decide what direction to number our ring, we're going to number the ring to give the lowest possible sum of the branches. So let's illustrate what we mean here. If we go and number in the counterclockwise direction, one, two, three, four, the sum there 
is going to equal to 1, the location where the hydroxy group is, plus 2, the location where the ethyl group is, plus 4, the location where the methyl branch is. And we sum those up. 1 plus 2 plus 4 makes 7. On the other hand, if we take the alternate route, which I'm going to show in blue, carbon number 1 is here, because carbon number 1 always has to be the one that has the hydroxy group. Carbon number 2, carbon number 3, 4, 5, and 6. We add up the sum of those numbers. And we get 1 plus 4 plus 6 makes 11. And keep in mind, we want to go with the way to number it to give the lowest sum of the locations of those branches. That means that the numbering system we showed in red is the correct way to go about numbering this molecule. So I'm going to erase the information in blue here so that we can get onward with this. Okay, with our numbering system in red established, then what we're going to go ahead and do is fill in the parent name as phenol, and it again is implied that the hydroxy group is at carbon number one of that ring, so you don't have to specify it as one phenol. It's implied that the hydroxy group has to be at carbon number one. Carbon number two is where our ethyl branch is. Carbon number four is our methyl branch. Plug those in in alphabetical order, so it's going to be two ethyl, four methyl phenol as the full name for this. And again, there's no chiral centers here to specify RS at, and we certainly don't need to specify EZ of the alkene groups within that ring because the stereochemistry of those is fixed into that ring system. So that's that. I want to make you aware of another way that we can go about specifying the locations of the branches when we have a di-substituted molecule. So in other words, when we have just two branches coming off of the molecule, there's a special system that we can use to name the location of those two branches relative to one another. So when we have a molecule that has two branches coming off of it, for example, a hydroxy group and an alkyl branch, we can define the relative locations of those two branches coming off the ring by using the terms ortho, meta, and para. Those describe the three different constitutional isomers that we can make having two branches coming off of the ring. So the ortho constitutional isomer will have your aromatic ring with the branches coming off at position one and position two. So we call this a one, two, di-substituted molecule because the branches are coming off at carbon 1 and carbon 2 of the ring. The meta constitutional isomer is our 1, 3 substituted molecule. So it would have a branch coming off of the ring at carbon number 1 and then we go around the ring to carbon number 3 and we'd have another branch. So we'd call this a 1, 3 di-substituted molecule. Then para is our last possible constitutional isomer, and that's going to correspond to, as you might have guessed, a 1,4 disubstituted molecule. So branch coming off at position 1, branch coming off at position 4. So we'd call this a 1,4 disubstituted molecule. And these branches that I'm showing here, I've just generically shown them going off as what looks like methyl groups right now. There could be whatever you want at the end of those chains. The substitution patterns will have the same names regardless of what groups are coming off there, ortho, meta, or para, corresponding to these three patterns of substituents. And this applies, again, only to di-substituted molecules. So if you have more than two substituents on your molecule, you have to go with the numerical system of specifying where the branches are at on the ring. But if you have just two, you can instead use these terms, ortho, meta, or para, to describe the locations of those two branches. So let's take a look at an example problem that applies using this terminology. So in this problem, we can recognize that we have phenol as the parent name of this molecule because we have an aromatic ring directly bonded to our hydroxy group. So we'll go ahead and plug the term phenol in here to get started with naming this molecule. And then our branch coming off down at the bottom here, we would describe as an isobutyl group. So we can call this isobutyl phenol. And then we need to specify the location of the hydroxy group relative to the isobutyl group in order to know exactly what constitutional isomer we're dealing with here. So there are two ways that we could possibly do this. 
We could refer to this by numbering starting at carbon 1 with the hydroxy group taking the shortest distance around. In this case, there's a tie going left or going right. And at position 4 is where the isobutyl branch is, so we could call this 4-isobutylphenol. Or synonymously, this pattern that we see here where the hydroxy group is relative to the isobutyl group matches with the para. So we could refer to this alternatively as para isobutylphenol. And we separate para from isobutylphenol using a dash there. So this would be a second term that we could accurately use to describe the name of this disubstituted molecule. So you should be familiar with the, using the terms ortho, meta, and para in addition to using numbers to specify where the branches come off. The terms ortho, meta, and para are very, very commonly used in naming aromatic molecules, not only in naming phenol derivatives, but also in naming a variety of other types of aromatic molecules. So you will be seeing these terms again.